So you're going to call this 13.5 notes, day two. And everything that you see me do is what we're going to do. We're going to do just four graphs today. And our focus is the phase shift. And I introduced this, I believe, on day three of 13.4. The phase shift is the trigonometry vocabulary to describe left, right. So phase shift. And you'll see on my answer keys, I put PS. For phase shift, left, right, vertical shift, okay, and I'll abbreviate that VS is the up, down. Now, A helps us with amplitude, B helps us with the period length. So the A and the B, we're actually not going to mess with in our first block of time today, okay? I, there's going to be A is 1 and B is 1. So the period length will be 360, the amplitude will be 1. I just like to do this nice and slowly where we, we played with amplitude period last time. Now we're going to work with phase shift, vertical shift, and then in, in our plus period today, we're going to put the two together. Amplitude period, phase, vertical shift. All right, everybody good? And if I do end up going too quickly for you, you should be able to go back to the notes. Need your own paper to do your notes, and if you have homework, I collected it. All right, example one. Again, we're going to do four graphs today. <coughs> y equals cosine x plus 30 degrees. Something I want to mention as you're you're jotting the problem down. If I had said cosine x plus pi over six, do you understand in radians? Like 360 degrees is 2 pi. We know how to do this in radians, if it appears in radians. So what you do is you start with step one. Graph y equals a cosine bx. So in this case, it's y equals cosine x. Amplitude is 1, a is 1. The period length is 360 over B, so in this case, that's 360, because B is 1. <clears throat> and this is actually the same setup as, co as sine. We did sine last week. And now we're working on cosine. The essential difference is our starting point. Sine starts at 0, 0. Cosine starts actually at the A value. So I make four ticks to the right, and I'm going to call it 360. I make four ticks to the left. Make sure you are labeling your x-axis and y-axis so I know what the ticks represent because problem to problem it varies. Yeah. Yeah. Right. Yeah, that's okay. Um, so, you know, as long as I get ticks labeled so I can figure out what one tick is on yours. So cosine is going to start at your a value. So when a is positive, you start positive. If a is negative, it's negative. Then I need to know it goes 0, negative 1, 0, 1. If you want to do two colors, some of you have had some really pretty colors. I like that. Um, you can use your two colors. If you're going to go with me and do it dashed and solid, you can do that. So, you're, But if you're going to use the two different colors, Leave me a legend or key that says which one is the final color um, so that I don't have to guess or try to figure that out. Step two, okay, you do y equals a cosine bx in step one. Step two is your vertical shift, phase shift. Phase shift is the left, right. This one is left, 30 degrees, and there's no vertical shift. So here's where it's very, very important why we're labeling the x-axis. What does one tick represent on the x-axis? 90 degrees. So how are we 
we going to estimate 30 degrees? Well, half would be 45. A third, right? Wouldn't 30 out of 90 be exactly a third? So we are going to have to eyeball it, but it want, we do want it to be less than um, halfway. So if I'm going to move left a third, so I'm going to look at that point and go a third, not quite the halfway. <coughs> You see how I'm doing that? Just you're gonna eyeball it, you're gonna estimate. But then it's really neat when you're done. I can literally see my first graph to my second graph has been shifted left about a third of a tick. We'll talk domain and range. So CJ, what is the domain of all cosine graphs? Mm -hmm. Yes, okay, sine and cosine, the domain is always negative infinity to infinity. So then, Braden, what would my range be here? If range are the y values, what's your lowest y? It hits to the highest y. Oh, sorry. Oh, sorry. Braden, can you help me? And it goes up to y is, yeah, there you go. So negative 1 to 1. They are brackets because it includes those values. All right, so my first example was a phase shift. And all I did was have us move it left. Okay. Number two. So now we're going to do a vertical shift. Then we'll do two problems that have both, a vertical and phase shift. So I'm trying to go nice and slowly, working us through this. shift is what you think. Okay. So when it's on the outside, it's up down what you think. On the inside, it's the opposite of what you think. So step one, you start with y equals cosine x. So a is 1, amplitude is 1, and the period length is 360 over 1, which is 360. So when you introduce left, right, up, down, phase shift, vertical shift, you need two graphs. Again, today I didn't mess with period length and amplitude changes just because I wanted us to get the hang of it. Let's do some forward mental thinking. I know I'm going to end up shifting this up two units. It is going to have a vertical shift, so I'm just going to go ahead and make two ticks up. So cosine starts at the A value. A is 1. Domain and range are done on the final graph, not on the intermediate graph. Okay, when we compute domain and range, it's on your final graph. So this one is going to have a vertical shift of up to. So what's going to happen? We do have a quiz Wednesday. Okay, so today is our last new material. And then tomorrow we'll review, <laughs> Wednesday we're going to have a quiz, and it's just graphing sine, cosine. That's all we've done in 13.4 and 13.5. But what's going to happen, and the, we're going to have a review sheet that's very similar to the quiz, where I'm going to put PS and BS, so you do need to know which is which. Vertical shift, I think, is kind of makes sense, up, down, and phase shift just has to be the other one, okay? So I'm, I'm going to have, like, amp period, phase shift, vertical shift. All right, so I'm going to take every single point and shift it up to. So just literally count up to, up to. 
two, up two. And if you're kind of getting the pattern and the rhythm of it, you don't have to physically move the other ones up two, just follow your pattern. So Mo, what's my domain for this graph? Negative infinity to infinity. All right, Jacob, what do you think the range is? Yeah, one to three. Now let's go back in time to 13, one. Do you remember how I would give you a graph and then say, what's my amplitude? And amplitude was one half the maximum minus the minimum. Well, three <coughs> minus one is two, half of two is one. So you can kind of verify that you are doing your range correctly, that it matches your amplitude. All right, questions? All right, so let's try this one. This one I'm going to put two together. So I have graph y equals cosine the quantity x minus 60 degrees minus 1. It's very important to kind of put the inside of your cosine and sine in a parenthesis so you know what's a phase shift versus what's a vertical shift. The exception to that is if it's just cosine x on the inside, then sometimes we don't put a parenthesis there. Uh, but if it's meant to be inside, there will be parentheses. So I'm going to pause and I want you to do as much of this one as you can. So you should be able to do step one. If not, wait for me and I'll help you. If you've been absent, I've been emailing you to say, hey, make sure you're watching the videos and trying to keep yourself um, as current as possible. Yeah. The x-axis and the y-axis. Um, if you do it accidentally on one, I wouldn't, but if you don't have labels on any of them, then yes, I'm going to take off. Because I can't guess, like, every problem isn't the same. Like, I don't know what you know if you don't write it down, is the problem. If it doesn't change, like, it's still 360. I would prefer you to still label them, because it isn't always 360. I know today in this first block it is, but <clears throat> all right, step one, I'm going to start with y equals cosine x. So the amplitude is one, a is one, and the period is 360. going to go down one, so I'll be proactive and pop that there. So cosine is going to start up at 1, 0, negative 1, 0, 1. So this is really, I'm getting really good at my parent function, cosine x. Then step two, my phase shift is right 60 degrees, and my vertical shift is down one. All right, well, what's one tick mark represent, CJ? Wait, 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 wait. How come the phase shift is right 60 if it's infinity? Remember, this, this follows my absolute value graphs, my square roots, my exponentials, my 
logarithms is the opposite of the inside. It was always the opposite of the inside. And if you think about it, like if I said x minus 60 equals 0, to figure out x, don't you add 60? Like that's why it's the opposite. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so back to a tick mark. How much is a tick mark? 90. So 60 degrees would be what part of a tick mark? Two-thirds, okay? It's 60 out of 90, so it's two-thirds. So I'm going to move every tick two-thirds to the right and down one. Two-thirds to the right, down one. Two-thirds to the right, down one. So then, Daria, what's my domain? Negative infinity to infinity. And then, Maddie, what's my range on this one? Good job. Negative 2 to 0. And make sure you do have brackets, okay? Make sure you do have brackets. All right, one more. Now, we do two of them. A phase shift and a vertical shift. <coughs> See how far you can get on your own. Then I'm also, and maybe I'll do it on here. Let's maybe just add two problems to the end here. Um, on the homework today, I have, I'm really working hard on that spiral review, maybe you've noticed, um, I want you guys to do outstanding on the final exam. So I've been adding four to eight problems at the end of functions, add, subtract, multiply, divide, co um, composition of functions. I've been doing some logarithms, exponentials. After the quiz Wednesday, you're gonna get rational, a rational review sheet. So, really, really working hard to get all this back in your brain for you to figure everything out so that, you know, when you do get your review guide, and I have actually printed it. What I did last year is I printed page by page, and, like, we took five class periods, where, like, on a Monday we have two periods. So... For most of you, I think that's going to be best, but if there are a few of you that would like the packet early, I would be happy to, to give you the whole thing early, but I don't want you to do it and then have nothing to do. I, it's not intended for my fast workers. It's really intended for those of you that take a little bit longer, then I'll give it to you ahead of time. Now this one's going to go down three, so I'm going to make three more ticks. So cosine starts at one. I'm going to make this one dashed. All right, Grace in step two, can you tell me my phase shift? Can you tell me the phase shift on this one? Oh yeah, left 90. Left 90. Kate, can you tell me the vertical shift? Down three. Good, down three. So according to my ticks, okay, according to my ticks, Olivia, how many ticks am I going to move if it's left 90? One. One tick, okay? Like when we did 30 degrees, we moved a third of a tick. When I had 60 degrees, it was two-thirds of a tick. On this graph, 90 degrees is one full tick. So I'm going to take each point and go left a tick and down three. Left a tick, down three. Left a tick, down three. 
Okay, so my domain, negative infinity to infinity. And uh, Marissa, what would the range be? Good job, negative four to negative two. All right, on this same sheet of paper, let's do two review problems. Um, So let's do just two problems and we'll call it spiral review because I want to go ahead and be proactive. If I said to you, I want you to solve 3 to the x equals 7. This is called an exponential equation. Okay, it's called an exponential equation because the variables in the exponent. Can you think of a whole number that when I take 3 to that power, it's going to give me 7? No. Okay, but that should be your first plan. Like if this had been 3 to the x equals 9, x would be 2. Okay? If it isn't, does anybody remember? Kat? Base 3. Yeah. Awesome. And then you just need a calculator. If you don't have the graphing calculator, you've got to do change of base. LN7 divided by LN3. <laughs> this is definitely a calculator crunch. Yeah, so 1.77, 1.8. All right, that's the first spiral review. If you can't think of an, a number to that power, you go from exponential form to logarithmic form. The second one, what if you're asked to solve the log of x base 2 equals 5? Nope, natural log is if you have a base e. <coughs> Say that again? Yeah, you go from logarithmic to exponential, and then that would be 2 to the fifth, which is 32. All right.